It's springtime, Easter's just around the corner, and you're looking for the perfect low-carb dessert to go with your perfect Easter dinner, right? The dessert has to be quick, the dessert has to be easy, and most importantly, the dessert has to taste delicious. Our recipe today is for gluten-free, keto-friendly carrot cake. Now, personally, I have tasted a lot of carrot cakes, and most of them I don't really care for all that much for one reason or the other. They either have humongous chunks of half-cooked carrots in it, or the frosting is really thick and makes the whole cake taste like a block of cream cheese, or it's got some other weird stuff in it that I just don't really care too much for. But this carrot cake, I have finally found the perfect mix for a keto gluten-free carrot cake. This cake is quick, it's easy, it's nice and moist, it has just the right amount of carrots and they're just the right size so they blend perfectly in with the cake. The frosting is light and thick and fluffy and does not make your whole cake taste like a pile of cream cheese. It's perfect. And if you want printable versions of this, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find a printable version for this and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, slide your little cursor over right next to the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell. That way you can be notified every time I put out a new video. And while you do that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line an 8 by 8 inch cake pan with parchment paper. In a large mixing bowl, combine 1 and a half cups of almond flour, 2 tablespoons of coconut flour, 1 tablespoon of baking powder, 1 and 3 fourths teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a half teaspoon of salt. Whisk these all together until everything is fully combined and there's no lumps in the flour. Now if you want to, you can change up the spices just a little bit in this. If you want to, you don't have to do just all cinnamon. You can do a mix of cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice if you want to. Or however you want to do it, you can always change up the spices just a little bit for different flavoring. After you've whisked it really well and there's no lumps, then set the bowl aside. And in a separate mixer bowl, Combine five tablespoons of very soft butter. You don't want it melted, but you do want it soft enough to, to be able to beat it smoothly into your batter. So you want it very soft, but not melted. Add four large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature. It makes for a much smoother batter, which results in a fluffier cake. Two tablespoons of room temperature sour cream. Again, you do want this room temperature to make for the smoother batter and one and a fourth teaspoons of vanilla extract. Beat these on medium for about 30 seconds or until everything is completely combined. Add a half cup of powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice and beat on medium for another 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined. Carefully add your dry ingredients to your wet ingredients. Make sure you do go carefully. You don't want your dry ingredients flying all outside of the bowl, so go slowly and carefully when you add it. Then beat on low for about 10 seconds just to get all the dry ingredients wet. And then bump the speed on your mixer up to medium and beat it on medium for 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and there's no lumps and no dry ingredients left in the bowl. Scrape down the sides if you need to. And gently fold in about a half cup of finely grated carrots. I usually just sprinkle them in a little bit at a time and fold it in just a little bit at a time. I don't usually add it all at once. I'll sprinkle in some, then I fold it in, then I sprinkle in a little bit more and fold it in. It just helps for the carrots to be evenly distributed in the batter. You don't want to have a clump of carrots in one area of your cake and then no carrots in another area. So make sure you just gently fold it in portion by portion. Mm -hmm. 
So once your carrots are all folded in, then scoop the batter into your prepared cake pan and use a spatula and spread the batter evenly across the pan. Make sure it is nice and even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to be mostly even. Bake at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes or until it's golden on top and a tester comes out clean. Mine usually takes about 23 minutes, but everybody's oven's different, so 20 to 25 minutes. Once it's done baking, then allow it to cool in the pan for at least one hour. Once it's cooled for at least an hour, then use a butter knife and gently separate the edges of the cake from the sides of the pan. And you could either leave the cake in the pan to cool completely, or you can do what I do and carefully turn it onto a wire rack so that it can cool completely before you frost it. If you do put it on the wire rack, make sure you turn it carefully onto the wire rack. Gluten-free cakes are fragile when they have any amount of warmth in them, so you don't want your cake to fall apart while you're turning it onto the rack. So just be very careful, go slowly and carefully turn it onto the rack if you're turning it out and letting it cool on the rack. Then again, let it cool completely before you frost it. For the keto cream cheese frosting, in a large mixer bowl, combine four ounces of softened cream cheese. Make sure it is soft. You don't want it melted, but you do want it soft. I usually let it sit on my countertop for an hour, an hour and a half, just until it gets nice and soft, but you don't want it watery or melted, so just soft. Add two tablespoons of softened butter. Again, this also needs to be soft. You don't want it melted, but you want it soft enough to be able to beat in smoothly. Beat the cream cheese and the butter together on low for about 30 seconds or until it is completely smooth. Add one fourth cup of powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Beat these together on low for about 30 seconds or until they're fully combined and the frosting is nice and creamy and smooth. When you're done mixing this, if the frosting still seems thick to you, you can add about a tablespoon or so of heavy whipping cream to it and then beat it in for another 15-20 seconds or until it's combined and you can add that until the frosting is your desired consistency. Some people like it thicker than others so it's up to you. Once the frosting's made and the cake is completely cool then gently place your cake onto a serving platter then use a small spatula or a butter knife and spread the frosting over the cooled cake. Again, make sure the cake is completely cooled before you frost it. Once it's frosted, if you want to, you can garnish it. You don't have to, but if you want it to look a little more fancy, you can put some pecans or mixed nuts on it. Otherwise, just slice your desired piece, put it on a plate, and eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make, and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking. <music>